the man quietly sleeping in his bed, which the layperson should not think is under stress. He's under some stress because his heart is continuing to beat. He has to go on using his respiratory muscles to breathe. Even his nervous system is working because he breathes. So that absence of stress is death. Only the death has no stress. In each chain there is one link which is the weakest. And no matter what stress of pushing you put on it, and no matter what direction, it will always predictably break right there. And it is just the same in medicine. And much of our scientific work in the laboratory here was uh, concerned with the establishment of the particular conditioning circumstances or predisposing circumstances which make an experimental animal react with one or the other type of stress disease. He uh, never understood... Since 1945, Hans Selye has worked here at the University of Montreal as Director of Experimental Medicine and Surgery. The university is now a world center for the study of stress. The whole concept arose from the observation that in addition to specific diseases, such as a gastric ulcer or a typhoid or tuberculosis, there is a syndrome, a set of manifestations, a set of disease signs which is common to all diseases. For example, that you lose your appetite, you feel you feel ill, you have no energy, you want to lie down rather than get up. And when I was a medical student, I, I became very interested in this. It didn't seem to me an obvious thing that that should exist, that there should seem, exist such a thing as what I called at the time the syndrome of just being sick, being sick from anything. And when I published my first paper on it, some ten years after I first uh, confronted that problem as a medical student, I published it in the British Journal of Nature under the title, A Syndrome Produced by Various Noxious Agents. What are the diseases of stress? Well, you know, actually, stress plays a factor, plays a certain role in any disease, because any disease causes an increased demand. You always have to come back to this definition in order to understand it. But there are some diseases in which stress is a decisive factor. And there are a whole lot of diseases that have no apparent cause. And people have been looking for the cause of it for a long time, but there is no cause. Because the cause is just any effort. Mm -hmm. Anything that causes stress. What is your personal attitude towards stress, towards the, the stress that's put on you? Stress is the salt of life. You have to be under stress in order to make life worthwhile. If a person is very much to express and feels that he is very creative, making it impossible for him to exteriorize himself is the most terrible stress that you can put about. So my philosophy is based on the concept not of being lazy and sitting around and doing nothing and trying to get the shortest working hours, but to work on the stress level for which I was born. Now, some people are more phlegmatic and others have more a need to express themselves. I have a fairly intense need for work. I need it. I couldn't exist without it. But I don't fight for things which I don't win. At least I must be convinced I can win, otherwise I don't fight. You just give up? I just give up. I admit defeat and do something else. Relationships with others, we need to do that but we can do it. And I just want to say to those of you who are over 65, and it applies to those who are under as well, take charge of your health. Mildly depressed people are very realistic about themselves. As you become depressed, you become aware of your defeats and start to feel hopeless. People who function well struggle against odds because they hold on to hope. A seriously ill person may do better if he maintains hope. But you should not be so optimistic that he fails to seek medical care. A little cooling up your system will be helpful.